So I'll be honest with you, I've been pretty depressed lately, and it won't lie, it really sucks to deal with. So what should I do in this sort of situation? Seek professional help? <laughs> nah, that stuff's for losers. Drown my sorrows in excessive amounts of alcohol? I'm below the legal drinking age, so uh, that won't be happening. Read the comments on my Overwatch vs. Paladins vs. Team Fortress 2 video? Uh... No, the obvious answer is to shut myself off from the world and play loads of video games, of course. So here's my top 10 PC games to play when you're depressed. Why specifically PC games, you ask? Because I lack the capability to record console or handheld systems. Hooray for technological incapability! Now you may be thinking, objective takes, what is this nonsense? A top 10 list? That's quite possibly the least objective type of video you could make. And you're right. To be honest, when I decided upon the name objective takes, it was mostly because it sounded good. I didn't really plan to have all my future videos be entirely objective, only some of them. I also really wanted to try out this style of video, and I have more analytical videos planned for the future. But either way, this is my channel, I make the rules. So on with the show. Before I begin, I would like to say that if you are actually feeling seriously depressed or experiencing symptoms of depression, playing video games will only help in the short term. I would highly recommend you seek refuge with friends or family, seek professional help, and definitely do not shut yourself off from the world. That will not help you. Trust me. Anyway, now that that serious disclaimer is out of the way, on with the show for real! To start us off at number 10, we have a bit of a weird one. This isn't so much a single game as it is a category of games. What does this category include, you ask? Well, good question, I'll tell you. But uh, please raise your hand next time, it's very impolite to shout questions at your screen with no warning. This category of games is often referred to as clicker games or incremental games. Essentially games where you start off with a small amount of resource, and through doing some small and often meaningless task, you build up your resources to buy upgrades that'll help you do that task better, to get more resources. The most well-known example of this type of game is definitely Cookie Clicker, but others definitely exist. They're a very relaxing type of game one can easily relax and sink their time into, focusing and caring about nothing in the world except how many cookies they're making per second. The combination of no skill requirement and just watching numbers go up is very enjoyable and stress relieving to some people, and I happen to be one of those people. So onto the list it goes. At number 9 we have Plants vs Zombies. You know what's fun? Zombie games. You know what else is fun? Killing zombies. You know what's more fun? Killing zombies with plants! Plants vs. Zombies is a prime example of a game that does a great job being just the right amount of fun and relaxing while not being overly challenging. I feel like I don't really have to say much about this game. I mean, everyone knows it at this point, and the premise is pretty simple. It's a tower defense game in which you use plants to kill zombies. It's fun. There's also a wide variety of minigames to play too if you happen to get bored of killing zombies in the normal botanical way. Really anyone can have a blast playing this game, from a little kid to a mentally hardened adult. Also, uh, this Crazy Dave. He's, uh... Crazy Dave. <laughs> At number 8, we have Grand Theft Auto V. Now, this may seem like a weird one. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't really feel like watching some guy get brutally tortured when I'm down in the dumps. Personally, seeing others in pain doesn't make me feel any better. But GTA V offers a lot more than just people getting their teeth ripped out of their skull. With GTA V especially, there's just so much to do, and so much of it is enjoyable, especially vehicular activities. I love just grabbing a motorcycle and racing as fast as I can through the city. You can steal a plane and do spins and flips before skydiving into the city below. Getting a mountain bike and working your way up Mount Chiliad before zooming back down the cliffside is one of the most fun things you can do. If you ever get tired of that, I personally like seeing how many people I can snipe before the police are able to take me down. You can always go golfing or play tennis. And all of this is without even mentioning the main storyline, which can honestly be very, very engrossing at times. And sinking hours into something like that can do wonders to distract you from your sorrows. Also, you can do this. Uh. Ah! 
At number 7, we have another weird one. Black Desert Online. Black Desert Online is a Korean MMORPG. If I could say only one thing about this game, it would be that it is stunningly gorgeous. I've always been of the mind that playing MMORPGs is a good way to relax, but sometimes that can be difficult when you're confronted with this and this. Don't get me wrong, WoW can be beautiful, especially the more recent areas, but even the most diehard fan has to admit that some of the earlier areas are ugly as sin. Black Desert surpasses this issue entirely by being innately good looking, and gameplay wise, it is super satisfying to play. I mean, just look at those effects! My friend literally just spent two hours once, just killing goblins as some sort of therapeutic rage session. Black Desert also has very fluid controls, and you can even parkour. I have loads of fun just jumping all around cities, seeing the sights. There's lots of... uh... lost... cats. While the UI and some of the translations may be clunky, this game is just a blast to play. And if you don't enjoy fighting monsters, you can always just fish or play around in the community market. As in any good MMO, there's something for everybody. At number 6 we have Portal 2. I'm actually a huge fan of the Portal series. In fact, I actually have my very own Portal gun. This game combines two of my favorite types of games, comedy games and puzzle games. Portal's puzzles are perfect when you just want to relax and not think too hard, as they can be difficult, but usually not too much so. The main reason I recommend this game when you're depressed though is the characters you interact with. Every speaking character, the primary three being Wheatley, GLaDOS, and Cave Johnson, is absolutely hilarious, and in between solving puzzles, trust me, you'll be busting a gut over and over again. The first time playing this game, I had so much trouble containing my laughter, and for a good reason. This game is incredibly clever in its humor and references, and everyone I know has had a blast playing it. In one portal and out the other, your sadness will be washed away. Oh hi. So, how are you holding up? Because I'm a potato. At number 5, we have Battle Block Theater. Holy hell, Battle Block Theater. You don't even necessarily have to play the game to have a phenomenal time with it. What really makes this game thrive is the narrator, Stamper. It's, it's, it's so beautiful. Just take a minute and watch this clip of the opening cutscene. Once upon a time, there was a boat. Now this wasn't just any boat, children. It was a ship. A ship full of friends. Hundreds of friends. Best friends, one and all. A veritable friendship it was. Get it? But it wouldn't be very ladylike of me if I didn't mention the most noteworthy friend on board. Hattie Hattington. Say hi to Hattie! Hattie was like King Friend of Friendship Kingdom, best friend to one and all, and the walking definition of handsome gentlemen. Now one fine morning, Hattie and Pal set out for a new, exciting adventure. What fantastic wonders would they discover this time? Perhaps they'd come across a scary ghost ship. Perhaps they'd find an island made entirely of candy. Perhaps they'd meet a band of scary, swashbuckling pirates, and join forces to find an island made entirely of candy. Who knew? Now imagine that guy narrating your entire gaming experience. This game can also be pretty challenging puzzle-wise. It all starts out pretty simple, but gets significantly harder as the levels progress. It's also co-op, so you can play with a friend. You can help each other out and have a swell old time. Or you can make each other's lives a living hell. That part's up to you. It's super fun to collect the different heads for your characters, or try to get an A-plus grade on every level. It's impossible to be upset when listening to the cheery music, or listening to Stamper serenade you. Uh, I still remember the first time I accidentally stumbled upon a secret room. At number four, we have The Sims 3. Ah, The Sims. You can do so much with The Sims. You can build houses for The Sims. You can design The Sims. You can have The Sims lead happy and fulfilling lives. You can brutally murder townfuls of The Sims, or laugh as your Sims are spooked by various things in the graveyard catacombs. The Sims 3 is a great way to spend your time when you're down for a number of reasons. First and foremost, as I just mentioned, there's a variety of things to do. A great way to have fun is to start a game with a specific challenge in mind, like kill every Sim in the town, or make a million simoleons with starting from nothing. One of my personal favorites is the Legacy Challenge, which is essentially starting from nothing and seeing how long you can keep your blood lighting going, while completing certain objectives along the way. If you ever get bored with your current town, you can always simply start a new one, or cheat your way to success and build the mansion of your dreams. 
Then you can invite the whole town over for a party. Then I recommend removing all doors and setting many fires. What? I said I don't enjoy people being in pain. Sims clearly aren't people. Also, my sim once found this this gnome, this garden gnome, in the mausoleum, and it just it it teleports all around the house. It's really weird. Help me. At the number three spot, we have Undertale, specifically a pacifist run of Undertale. Now, I first played Undertale back before it took the internet by storm, and I only knew one thing about it: there was a way to solve every problem without killing anything. A true anti-top-down RPG philosophy. So I decided to follow that idea. Little did I know that that would unlock a truly wonderful story with a brilliant ending. So few games nowadays have happy endings that when you find a good one that does, if done right, it can really overwhelm you. Nowadays I turn to Undertale when I'm feeling down as its memorable characters, witty humor, dramatic encounters, and compelling world and story provide a truly unparalleled experience. The pacifist ending really does just make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And a little papyrus in everyone's life could really do everyone some good. He's such an upbeat and cheery fellow, what could possibly go wrong? Oh. Huh. At the number two spot, there's Goat Simulator. What can you even say about Goat Simulator? Well, I can say one thing. I'm not as big a fan of the DLC, so I'm mostly talking about the base game. When this game came out on April Fool's Day 2014, everyone thought it was just a silly, pointless game. And boy were they right. But what a silly, pointless game it is. For the uninitiated, Goat Sim is a game where you play as a goat, doing normal goat things such as grazing in a field, participating in a fighting tournament, having dinner with your family, being abducted by aliens, hanging out in your pen, communing with Satan, wearing fancy hats, or raving with Dead Mouse. Goat Simulator is a game that embodies the bugginess of many indie games and harnesses that to great comedic effect. The first time one plays this game, they can scarcely go a minute without laughing their ass off. It has a huge replayability. There's always new things to find, new easter eggs around every corner. It's really difficult to feel down when this farm animal is roaming around. Never before have I played such a broken, lazily programmed game that just works so well. And now, as some dishonorable mentions, here's some games you should absolutely not, under any circumstance, play when depressed. Resident Evil 7 in VR I've never really been a fan of horror games, but this is one game that would do nothing but traumatize me forever, especially were I to play it in VR. No, bad times abound. Life is strange. <laughs> Overwatch, Paladins, or Team Fortress 2. I greatly enjoy each of these games, but let's face it. While many people are friendly, the communities can be downright toxic. Like, really toxic. Like, make you want to kill yourself toxic. And if you aren't good at the game, it can be incredibly frustrating. Undertale Genocide Root. <laughs> no, Papyrus, I don't like it. No, I'm not. <laughs> also, that Sans fight. Holy shit. Dark Souls 3. Do I really need to explain this one? And last but not least, at the number one spot, we have Slime Rancher. Words cannot describe how much I adore this game, so I won't use words. I use the game itself. Look at it! Look at how cute it is! But seriously, this game is an indie game that came out on January 14th, 2016 as an early access game, and has had a huge number of updates since then. The point of the game, in case you couldn't tell by the name, is to ranch slimes. Equipped with your vac pack, you explore this world populated by small gelatinous creatures called slimes. Collect them and raise them, feeding them and collecting the plorts they produce to sell on the plort market. You can raise a wide variety of species of slimes, each with their preferred type of food. Anything from pink slimes, which will eat anything but produce plorts that aren't worth very much, to honey slimes that only eat fruit but have more valuable plorts. 
You can buy various upgrades for your ranch using the money earned from selling plorts, or you can use that money to expand your ranch for more slime ranching space. You can acquire slime keys by feeding Gordo's slimes, and use those to unlock new sections of the world to explore, each populated by its own unique species of slime. All in all, this game is just super relaxing, and you can sink hours into it just playing around and exploring the world. It's hard to be sad when surrounded by something so cute. Ah, I feel better already just gathering footage for all these games. They're fun times, let me tell you. But anyways, thank you all for watching. See you all in the next video.